I tried Neverness or Everness early, and it blew me away. First impressions, okay, from Braxavone. Brax actually made made it there. It's gonna be a good. Don't think it does anything too different. We'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens in T. I feel like maybe there is just a bit too much hype. Like there's too much glazing going on. Like like it blew me away type of shit. But I mean, it is kind of a breath of fresh air in the gacha industry. Okay, so we'll see what happens. Okay, let's let's watch this. Braxophone at TGS. Okay, before I say anything not else, sponsored. this video is not sponsored. Like in any okay. way, shape, or form. They did not pay me to say this. They didn't incentivize me to say this. They didn't give me anything. Uh -huh. I legitimately just went to Tokyo Game Show today just looking at games and trying things out. Uh -huh. And I found out that Neverness to Everness actually had a booth there at Tokyo Game Show. Uh -huh, now, this is sure. weird to me because as far as I know, Neverness to Everness was a really new reveal. Like this game had no info on it. Uh -huh. And then they just dropped the trailer and everyone was like, whoa, that looks so cool. And then proceeded to forget about it because they were playing 17 other gacha games. And usually when games reveal sure. in the gacha, space it's True. usually like okay the game is revealed now we're gonna have three betas and the game will be on two years and that's like how it feels like it goes every single time but neverness everness actually uh -huh. had a playable version of it here at tokyo game show and they actually let me just record over the shoulder footage of me playing the game they didn't i, I mean no shit it's not project mugen okay it was already in development for two years of course there's playable demos now okay I'm assuming they didn't have OBS on the computer or something. I don't really know. So anyways, everyone had like a 10 minute timer when they went in to go play the game, but they actually gave They only got 10 minutes now? It was 15, right? Was it, is it because the line is way too fucking long? They had to like cut it down to 10? That fucking sucks. 10 minute timer when they went in to go play the game, but they actually gave me like 45 minutes because I was recording and, you know, free promo. Of course. I mean, see, of course. Free is free. I mean, if you're going there and you're saying, oh shit, look, I'm a Hoyo CC. I have this many subs. Let me play for longer. Free, okay? Of course. Come on, whatever. So I figured that I would just talk about it and give you guys my honest first impressions. Actually, that's not entirely true because I wouldn't be talking about it if I didn't like it. There would not be a video on this game if I did not think that this was awesome by the way if you can't Fucking tell awesome. like completely unscripted i'm just kind of watching the video back as i'm talking about it okay so what is nte or uh -huh. never Everness? if you guys don't know what this is it's basically a gacha game that was recently revealed okay so this is actually him recording the monitor right like straight up over the shoulder footage it actually looks quite good and it's Fucking sort of insane. like an urban fantasy gacha game so they kind of have some fantasy elements but it's wait you you got 30 minute demo because you name dropped simon Wait, what the fuck? It actually works? What the fuck? Do you get to pick a gender in NTE or are you waifu only? Ah, uh, one person interviewed the devs and said male playable MC is cooking and definitely will be available, but it's not available for this demo because, you know, male MCs don't fucking matter. Not a priority, okay? No one cares meant to take place sort of in the city uh there's cars and things like that and you can actually get a car and customize it you can drive it around which is super sick uh there's traversal of buildings and stuff and then your combat system feels sort of sim oh right the, the ui is in english now right apparently there was like three language settings there was chinese english or simplified chinese english and uh japanese right and then for voice acting, there was only Japanese VA and CNVA at the demo. Okay. You get a car and customize it. You so there is English. Around, which is super sick. Uh, there's traversal of buildings and stuff. And then your combat system feels sort of uh -huh. similar, at least to me, a mix between some Genshin and some Weathering Waves. Now, honestly, if you've been playing all of the recent gacha games, this probably doesn't feel like anything Some super Genshin. important or new to you, and that's Some totally Lua. fine, because I get it. I'm a content creator for gacha games, uh -huh. and I've played, like, all of the new ones that have come out that have been supposedly competing with each other, and ultimately I burnt out, which is why my <laughs> upload schedule has slowed down so much, because I'm so tired of playing the same gameplay loop and the same gacha games over and over and over. See, th there's the PlayStation right there. You guys see it in the background? There's, there's a PlayStation version, there's a PC version. Okay. So when I tried Neverness to Everness and I actually really liked the game, it was super surprising to me. I found myself I just playing the game. through this sort of like trial demo thing. Well, actually, I think it's just the full game, but like they limited your playtime and they specifically wanted you to avoid parts that were like unfinished. So, you, you right? He's like, this is a full game, okay? Game is cooked. Release it now. Fuck you doing, Hopper you know, normal stuff. But I found myself getting completely sucked into all the different things there were to learn and know about the game. 
Anyways, I've been yapping so long about this. Let me tell yeah, you specifically what I really liked about the game. First off, uh -huh. when you get into the game, the opening for the game is different, which I, I know is like the bare minimum, but hear me out. Dude, I'm tired of games where you like wake up and there's and you have amnesia and there's just like a floating thing next to you. But you still have amnesia though. You still have amnesia. What do you mean? I guess the intro is different. And then you have to like listen to the, this really high pitched yapping and they talk for you instead of you actually. High pitched yapping. What is this? Is he throwing shade at Genshin? Biting the hand that fed you? What are you doing, Braggs? He's getting canceled. You have to like listen to the, this really high pitched yapping and they talk for you instead of you actually having dialogue. Like, I just really hate that. And I'm so tired of that. NT wow. doesn't do any of that. They kind of just are like, oh yeah, you you need to help us with this like mission. And then you just get kind of thrown into it. And it's really, really cool and like modern. And the environment they throw uh -huh. you into is so interesting and appealing. It's he just keeps doing the pog face. Imagine his whole gameplay was just pog face this whole time. Not your normal fantasy setting. It's not post-apocalyptic. It's like this urban sort of like, oh, I'm going to run through this like train station, but there's grass and trees everywhere too. Um, I, I uh -huh. don't know if eco-brutalism is the right way to describe it because I don't uh -huh. feel like the buildings are quite that complex. But the opening they throw you into is a lot more exciting than some of the other stuff I've played. Maybe exciting. again, it's just because I'm tired of the whole like amnesia trope and I think they even mentioned something about this character not knowing who they are or remembering who they are. But like that's not right. the main point they try to draw across. It's just like a side plot of like, oh yeah. Okay, so he does know the main MC is uh, amnesia. Okay. Yeah, you'll figure it out later. Anyways, go do this mission, uh -huh. you know, and I, I don't know. I just had a lot of fun with that. And the next thing I noticed, um, I, I mean, aside from the gameplay stuff, because I'll get into that in a little bit, uh, all of the cutscenes, uh, the characters' expressions and the way they do the cutscenes is so, I, I mean, I just said expressions, but it's expressive. Uh -huh. Like when I played Zenless Zone Zero, I felt like expressive. I was watching like a movie when I was in cutscenes and Nervous to Everness feels like I'm watching an anime uh, in these cutscenes as well, which is like super uh -huh. cool because I think that's a super important part to storytelling. If you're going to have characters yapping forever and ever and ever which is a commonality between all of these chinese gacha games it is so incredibly important to have something moving on screen because god damn it this entire generation has been ruined mm -hmm. by subway surfers videos next to reddit story times on tiktok there needs to be some that is kind of true all right the presentation as good as zenless zone zero okay heard it here for first from uh from a hoyo cc sort of movement there or we're going Insane. to like stop caring and i feel like it's just so incredibly important to the retention and it also shows that the devs want to create an experience that is enjoyable through multiple steps of the way there's also some humor in there that um didn't land super well with me because it was uh, in japanese and for some reason when i am playing video games i really struggle to pay attention during J so th there is actually english localization in the text now which is and they're using like lemmy and stuff Okay, we, we, we can like go through the English localization later. JP dub. Like with the anime, it's pretty good. For some reason, but with games, I can't. I don't know. Maybe I'm just f weird. But even though I don't understand Japanese, the humorous moments actually hit with me because I could see the they effects hit? in the background of the characters' facial expressions uh -huh. and, and the way the, the sounds worked. It just like made it very, very clear what was happening. And I don't know. I feel like in a way they're expressing it as if you're a toddler, but not explaining it like you're a toddler. It's just the visual stimulation is really good for my ADHD uh -huh. brain. Fortnite's oversaturation, okay. constant action combat has absolutely obliterated the attention span of multiple generations of gamers oh, and this game shit what was that he recorded so much footage man holy shit obliterated the attention span of multiple like what the fuck is this multiple Pretty generations good. of gamers and this game like really combats that which i have just been super happy with oh and also they have a skip button which i can't believe i'm uh -huh. saying is like a positive thing as if it's a skip be button. the norm but i guess maybe we're moving back towards the norm and in away from the abnormalities uh, i i guess though this uh -huh. game is actually anything but normal and i really like that about it you've He's probably still seen some of the background gameplay already um uh -huh. and it's 30 fps so it will look a little bit choppier probably on the youtube playback but when i was playing it it was a smooth 120 fps baby that's right it is completely unlocked at 120 fps god smooth 120 and this device was a 4070 ti right 4070 ti with an i9 intel okay Ooh, I can never, man. God bless. I don't understand why games are limiting to 60 FPS. That is such a stupid decision. Like, unless your game is literally incapable of running at 120, but it is the year 2024, please do better. Holy shit, look at this. It's 4K. Hold on, hold on. It's an ultra. It's at 4K. 
has DLSS, has super resolution, global inu- illumination mode is lumen, reflection mode lumen, 120fps. For please do better. So yeah, buttery smooth, 120fps, and what honestly, the, fuck? the game just looks super polished. You know, okay. that's one of the other things that surprised me. They had a playable demo, which is great, but the game is also super well polished, which means that it could honestly be pretty close to release. But I don't want to get my hopes up because doing that could just be what bad the f- for, for what the fuck is this? Like but yeah, the polish is holy shit, Brax. What are you doing? Let's watch this again. What the fuck was that? Surprised me. They had a playable demo, which is great, but the game is also super well polished, <laughs> which means that it could honestly be pretty close to release, but I don't want to get my hopes up because doing oh that my is God. bad for, for your happiness and stuff like that. But yeah, the polish is really insane. It's diabolical. Um, compared to Tower Why would he Madison, do that? This game feels... Wait, wait. Compared to Toph? Wait, what? Polish is really insane. Um, compared to Polish? Tower of Fantasy, Tough. this game feels much more. Um, I don't want to say AAA, but it feels like it had a really high budget and some very talented developers working on it. Because uh-huh. I feel like the movement in this, the animations compared of everything, to just looks so incredibly good. And I actually really uh-huh. like the character designs. I have heard some people don't really like the um, the, the sort of like oversaturated stuff, but I love it. I mean, again, uh, Fortnite, Subway Surfers, Brain Rot. Oh, and while we're talking about the uh, movement, sure. sort of, the movement feels very fast-paced, which is good. I think some games can feel kind of sluggish based on the inputs or, like, how characters move. Um, sure. I, I guess, like, I don't know, maybe that's just a personal preference thing, but, like, Monster Hunter is an example. Um, a lot of people really like the weight of Monster Hunter, but I like the weight of Grand Blue, which is, like, it, does, it doesn't feel that heavy. And in this case, when uh-huh. you're playing, like, an anime sort of game, I think it makes more sense to have less weight, and I think that did that very well. Um, less clear, weight, I'm good. Not really hating on Monster Hunter or anything. I love Monster Hunter. I plan on covering Wilds when it comes out, and I think that game's really, really cool, but I, I'm just saying that game has, like, pretty slow-feeling movement in comparison, uh, whereas this game feels very reactive and very fast-paced. Sure. I'm not gonna get into all of the mechanics of the combat and everything, because I feel like that could be a whole nother video, and I want to milk you guys for ad revenue, but what I do really- <laughs> want to milk you guys for ad revenue, this motherfucker. <laughs> Oh my god, okay. What I like about Never Severness is, well, honestly, it's a, it's a couple of things about the combat. First off, you have your normal QE thing going on. You have your skill and your ultimate. And those skill and ultimates just feel so impactful. I think it's, it might just be like a design thing. I don't think mm-hmm. it's like, oh yes, all... I'll say, this thing is called Picture Frame. Oh, okay. The pic- Artless Frame, I, sh- I feel like feels like a better name at this point. It's, it's kind of awkward the way they named this thing but okay All skills and ultimates are impactful but i feel like they did a really good job of making it feel like they just hit but you also have qtes uh-huh. as well so if a character's icon on the top right just starts flashing or maybe not the top right but the right side starts flashing you can switch to them and you get like some sort of special like intro skill um similar intro, to weathering yeah. waves mm-hmm. but also uh-huh. i don't feel Ooh, like the uh-huh. combat is quite as complex as weathering waves which i think is a really good thing i honestly think that weathering waves is a super good game but the combat can be less than appealing to a lot of people that don't want to learn all the intricacies of it so having combat that's less complex than that is actually kind of nice but as i mentioned before it feels so so casual combat more casual than weathering waves somewhere between genshin and weathering waves where there's some mechanics of like real-time action quick combat but there's also a sort of system that is similar uh, to elemental reactions now i'm not gonna go into a ton similar of detail about it because reaction. one i don't really want to be okay there's a team menu okay so i'm covering the resonance thing over here i think we've saw we've seen this already right jing Liu fan and then mint there's six team presets, probably maybe more. Quick edit enabled. Okay. Be wrong, and I didn't learn everything there is to know during my. Football. Oh shit! We have the whole thing here. What is this? Let's let's take a look. Blossom. Okay, not bloom. Blossom. After triggering Esper cycle, Leben stem. The fuck is that? Will spawn near the character and blossom five Leben blooms. Leben blooms will then fly towards targets and explode every two seconds, dealing damage to an area. So this was the you you create a you create like a plant, and it'll shoot at your enemies. And then this element is called Cosmos. And then her name is still Zero, right? They should change this name to your your player now. It's still she's still called Zero somehow. And then Blossom enhancement. Each Leben has splits into two and explodes upon hitting target within range. Blossom enhancement spawned five additional blooms with a 100% increased attack rate. 
attack range expanded by 200%, damage increased by 100. Nanali spawn one additional, up to six. Will continue to draw in nearby targets. Wait, how does this work? Like, you, you put in different characters and they have different buffs? For the passive, I guess? Why are they here twice then? Huh. This is probably everything Let's there listen is to, to know. I don't do a ton of detail about it because one, I don't really want to be wrong and I didn't learn uh -huh. everything there is to know during my 45 minutes of gameplay. And two, this is probably an earlier build, I'm assuming, because, you know, with... Okay, there's Remora. Okay, so there's two reactions, right? Uh, after triggering Esper Cycle, so the reaction is called Esper Cycle, the target enters Remora, slowing its movement attack speed. Effect decays over time will have a shorter duration of repeatedly applied. Wait, are these toggles? Is probably an earlier build, I'm assuming, because, you know, it's at the... You can just straight up toggle these passives. Remora Sprawl Aftershock, the dif different reactions. Target takes additional instance of unison damage equal to... Uh, equal to the Psyche and Lakshana damage. It's taken within 12 seconds. What's that even fucking mean? Convention. I think these I think I think these are the different elements. We're finally not getting the usual fucking, you know, fire, water, ice, I don't know, the, the usual elements of every gacha game. They're cooking like random bullshit, right? Soul, light, dark, I don't know, curse and all kinds of random shit. Okay, not your traditional elements. Oh yeah, vault. Vault's dead, that's why I don't remember Vault, my bad. Game isn't released yet, so things could change, but there are interactions between different elements right? you of you can turn them on. Deal, which means there is going to be quite a bit of complexity to combat. You do have per Hex, after triggering, the target enters Hex for 12 seconds, taking damage over time, so there's a dot. Perfect okay. dodges, and actually the way dodges work in this game is super interesting. Mm -hmm. I really like how they did it. Echo, target takes increased Psyche and Luxana damage for 12 seconds. These are two different elements, right? Maybe? Abundance? There's three-way resonance. Levin Bloom's hit targets are fed by Remora. Character on field gain one additional field essence. What the fuck is field essence? And dissonance. When the target is simultaneously under the effects of Aftershock and Hex, a percentage of their break is deducted. Pretty interesting how I feel like their English localization so far, what we see, is actually not bad. It's pretty fucking good. So, you know, in most games, you can just spam dog. Wait, this game is super and then he's going to talk about the dodging thing, right, Brax? And then how you get to save a dodge every time you do one that we noticed earlier. Super interesting. I really like how they did it. So, you know, uh -huh. in most games, you can just spam dodge and it takes like stamina. And by most games, I mean specifically <laughs> Genshin Impact. Well, in this game, you actually have three dodges with cooldowns and these dodges will allow you to perfect dodge. Uh, and when you run out of dodges, then you can't do that. So you actually get punished for dodge spamming. You cannot spam dodges, at least not with any of the characters that I have that so you actually get that's literally the Toph system first of all Toph had this like on day one but uh i don't think he noticed we saw in the footage if you do do a perfect dodge you don't consume a dodge charge so you still have three if you do a perfect dodge so like yes you can still spam perfect dodges yeah I, like yesterday's footage when we uh i don't even know where i can find it i think that it was the japanese tgs coverage footage I think. But yeah, if you if you have skill and you perfect dodge, you don't use the charge. At least so far as what we can see from the demo. Punish for dodge spamming. You cannot mm -hmm. spam dodges, at least not with any of the characters that I have right now. Um, and I think that's actually good. I think that that means mm -hmm. that you do have to time your dodges. You're gonna have to learn not to spam. But it's not so complex that like it punishes people for being bad at the game because you have three whole dodges. Like you're fine. And if you a time and attack when you're done dodging uh, or at the right time, you kind of do this like really really powerful hit, uh, and it just feels really <laughs> satisfying. I'm not. Wait, there's dodge attacks? If you time if you time a hit during while you're dodging. So that means there's dodge attacks, right? Like literally tough. You're fine. And if you time an attack when you're done dodging, uh, or at the right time, you kind of do this like really, really powerful hit, uh, and it just feels really satisfying. Dodge attacks are actually powerful, but <laughs> not tough. Like that shit is completely useless, right? There's back dodge and directional, I think. I mean Wuwa doesn't have dodge attacks. Wuwa dodge into attack is basically you uh, skip your first two auto attack chains, right? And you go back to regular auto attacks, but you go to the third hit immediately. I mean, Wuwa parry is parry. This is after dodge and then you time it. 
I mean, Wu has the after perfect dodge. He didn't say perfect dodge. Oh, you have the perfect dodge in here too? Okay. Fine. And attack when you're done dodging uh, or at the right time you kind of do this like really really powerful hit uh and it just feels really satisfying i guess no tough dodge uh, not attacks quite like a parry in weathering waves but it just you know it hits it hits uh -huh. different but speaking of harder hitting so you also sort of have this like break bar on bosses break bar, and when uh -huh. it's completely full you'll like stun the boss and they'll take some extra damage and they'll be like remaining stunned for a second and it's really really sick i like how they do that um and because that is a thing in the game they also have more stats so not only do you have to worry about like your own scalings and stuff but you also have to so we got the break bar so basically, this is the the tough bar that you can charge up on some of the newer enemies, right? Also kind of like in Zelda Zone Zero. It's not tough shield. Tough sh it's like reverse tough shield. In tough, you have to like reduce the thing to shatter. It's like a stagger meter in ZZZ. To worry about like your break or not break, um, your, your stun scaling break. No, maybe it is break. Filling up that gauge, how fast it fills up. Gauge. And then I'm sure there's other multipliers that go into it too. I guess basically what I'm saying is that there's a lot more to sort of think about when it comes to min max and characters in this. And the combat feels different enough to uh -huh. where it's going to be interesting. Maybe the characters are all going to end up being built the same like in Genshin Star Rail and every other game where it's like, oh yes, attack, damage. Bro, he's level one. Is he just a good player? Like, I saw some other, like, I saw that other level one demo, right? A guy tried to kill this level one and took, like, a whole fucking year. He's doing a shit ton of damage. A lot more to sort of think about when it comes to min-max and characters in this, and the combat feels different enough to where it's going to be interesting. Maybe the characters are all going to end up being built the same, like, in Genshin Star Rail and every other game where it's I like... I don't think it's edited. Damage crit. But at the same time, because there are sort of... His characters are actually doing a shit ton of damage. Like, elemental reactions, and because there uh -huh. is reactionary combat, and... Oh, shit, what did he just leak over there? Because there are sort of, like, elemental reactions, and because there is reactionary... Okay, what is this? Yeah, of course. Uh-huh. Yup, your usual skill chain leveling up system. You can, you can level up your basic... What is what is all this? What, what is this? There's, like, basic attack skill and ultimate, and then you can unlock further... To add different passives, maybe? And what does this say? Does this say skill or does it say shield? It looks like shield to me. Three passives. Fade in? What the fuck is fade in? Is this your intro skill? Break Here. And break. Because there are sort of like elemental reactions and because there is reactionary... Oh my god, he's, he goes so fast. Go back here. Right here. I thought this says shield. <laughs> it looks like shield and not skill. And then there's these passives, right? One of one. Hard speed, crit chance, crit damage, health, attack, defense. Okay. And breaks. I think there is going to be a lot of... Okay, there we go. This thing is called Essentia. Essentia. Charge speed, critical chance, crit damage. Okay. For playing around with that and optimizing team. Break intensity. And stuff. And I think that's really cool. I don't know why I emphasized cool so, so hard there. Oh, this needs to be changed. Really cool. I don't know why I emphasized cool. They fucking localized this to like Cosmos vulnerability, anima vulnerability, right? That kind of sucks. This is supposed to be your damage bonus, right? Supposedly? Because then you have resistance, right? I feel like this localization needs to be changed. 100%. There's six elements, right? Cosmo, anima, incantation, chaos, psyche, lockja, cognito. There's six elements. One of them is like overall regular damage bonus. So we have Cosmos, Anima, Incantation, which Chaos, Psyche, Lakshana, Cognito. I feel like it's overall. I, I feel like this, this, I don't know, the vulnerability thing needs to be changed. I'll tell them later. So, so hard there. But um, I, I don't know why I emphasized cool. But yeah, the naming, the naming, there's like, what is this? I don't know. Did they try too hard with the fucking localization? I feel like they tried a bit too hard with it with the English. Like lasagna damage. They could have just went psychic. What is Lakshana anyway? I don't fucking know, man. I'll, I'll tell them. I'll tell them. This is they, I feel like they tried way too hard with the fucking localization here. <laughs> so hard there. 
But um, uh -huh. I guess that kind of ties into the next thing, which is going to be character improvements. So basically, you character have like uh -huh. talent trees. Uh, it, it's not really a tree. It's kind of like talents that get you in back. You kind of just have like your skill, your basic attack, your ultimate. Uh -huh. But you also have some passive abilities. Oh, shit. Okay, so uh, you can level up your basic attack. That, that first one was attack, right? Which, I mean, I guess are also similar, but on top of that, you kind of have traces. Um, Attack, traces HP, anima better. damage, HP. So it's like, it's like Wuwa, but with two more. Uh-huh. Uh, you get some bonus stuff there, um, and you'll fill that out. And HP, attack, defense, anima damage. Pretty normal stuff. But all in all, it feels like there's a lot of progression and complexity to it. There are weapons, there are probably going to be some kind of artifacts, but uh, we couldn't actually look at those in this version. I'm assuming that's because... So uh, artifacts, right? What we learned from someone else that interviewed the devs, artifacts won't be like fully RNG like your other games, Genshin, Wuwa, whatever the fuck. It would be like way easier. There won't be too much RNG on those. Like you can select whatever thing you want type type of situation. Someone else interviewed. So it won't be like they're trying to focus more on actual content than like just relic RNG bullshit. At least that's what we got from that previous interview we reacted to. Because things are not finalized, so, you know, that's totally fine. One other thing I will say, um, I don't know if I'll have the footage for this uh -huh. by the time I'm making the video, because uh, Gotcha Smack was actually there, and that was really cool. I got to meet gotcha him in person, Smack. and he actually uh -huh. fought one of the bosses. I didn't get to fight the motorcycle boss, but he found it, and if I get the footage, I'll put it in the that's video fair. now. Uh, but basically, the boss fights seem pretty dang cool. There is a downside right now, which I'm assuming they're going to fix, uh -huh. because we complained about it for <laughs> 30 minutes. But, but they don't have a lock-on feature for the bosses, which can be a little annoying, so I'm hoping they add that. So that is one negative, but that's like easily no fixed, lock I feel uh -huh. like. With, uh, with some development time, so hopefully they fix it. Uh, and you actually get to the motorcycle boss by just driving through the city, finding a motorcycle on the road, following him through the tunnel, and following him until he gets pissed off, and you get this whole cutscene, and then you, you end up fighting him, and it's actually really, really sick. Something I was told by the... Doesn't the boss spawn literally right here? Did he just miss it? The staff there while I was playing through the game, and I didn't actually in encounter any of this in the city, is that there are different boss spawns depending on the time of day and the weather. Oh, time of day. Because he was driving around here in day daytime, so the boss didn't spawn. That's crazy. What the fuck? Weather, weather and time of day system. Which I think is really, really cool. I think that could be annoying if you have to, like, farm for certain characters and they require certain bosses to sort of, like, level up and then you can't find that boss because you can't force a weather change and stuff. But what I will say is it was absolutely sick to just be running around mm -hmm. the city, which I'll talk about in just a second as well, but you probably already see gameplay of it. And while you're just running around the city, like, oh, it starts okay. raining and now there's water everywhere and, like, you're running in water puddles and the NPCs, all the people around you just start reacting and, like, pulling out umbrellas and stuff i think well not those npcs clearly well shit that's a really cool detail and actually the attention to detail in this game just seems really 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 good now we didn't get any footage of this but while we're there was a fat guy they're real the attention to detail in this game just hold seems on really 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 good now we there's a fat dude in this game the one as one noticed holy shit we found a fat dude. Any footage of this, but while we're on the topic of the city as well, uh, there is a sort of like room system where you can kind of just have a room. I don't know what you can do with that because room I didn't system. really get to play it. But I'm assuming they're gonna have some sort of sandbox stuff. Uh, they didn't. They didn't tell me. So, uh -huh. but in the city, there are other things to do uh, than just <laughs> sit in your room and, and rot. All I mean, you you're in the room, you decorate it, and probably you can invite people over. Who the fuck knows, right? Decorating your your house is definitely a thing that they already confirmed. All day. You can run around the city, uh, run around at the speed of sound, got places to go, got to follow the rainbow, all that. You can run up walls. If you hold on, hold on. Let's see the map. Ibon Antique Shop, Coastal Highway, White Parrot Street, New Way, Pear Avenue, Moomin Street, Torchwood Avenue. These fucking names, man. What is this? Fox Window Street? <sighs> These street names, man, are <laughs> so random. But okay, I mean, right? Ha Hankaku Street. You I mean, can okay. run up walls okay. if you have the cat girl with the red hair, and that's really quite disorienting, but it's also really cool. Um, I think that you'll kind of get used to it, maybe, hopefully. I don't know. Honestly, maybe we'll never get used to it, and then we'll just start uh, projectile vomiting everywhere. But I think it's a cool <laughs> uh, idea and a cool mechanic. And also, 
But for other world traversal things, you get a car, uh -huh. which you I think I car. mentioned earlier. Um, you can take it into an auto shop. You can change the car, change the stats of the car. You can also unlock different cars, and you can drive around. A, I almost called it San Andreas, but that's not actually where that is at all. Anyways, you can drive around. It's pretty cool. If you run over the people, nothing happens, San unfortunately. Andrea. Or fortunately. Uh -huh. I don't know. I guess, I guess it depends on your target demographic. GTA players might be disappointed, but you can, like, run over different things in the environment, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, you can get some six speed, and I think just having world traversal in that way is really, really dope. Other things. Other things. Um, I guess the... Isn't Moomins a trademark? Is it? I have no idea what that is. If it is, let me know. Okay, <laughs> they're gonna get sued for a street name. <laughs> Having world traversal in that way is really, uh -huh. really dope. Other things, other things. Um, I guess the last few things that I have to say about, like, sort of the, the UI and the experience is that I think that the UI is, while it is very similar to Genshin, I think that, like, the character screen is something that I feel like is uh -huh. really character fresh, good. looks super good. Um, and I think that, like, a lot of the ways you interact with things in the environment is pretty different. You know, I had heard that... The the UI is literally a fucking standard now. Like every game has the same fucking UI. It doesn't. If it's anything different compared to Genshin, people are gonna hate it. If it's the same, people are gonna hate it. Like why change it then? It doesn't fucking matter. While it is very similar to Genshin, I think that like the like people are familiar with this UI already. There is no reason to change. Everyone should just use the same fucking UI. Like honestly, character screen is something that I. Okay. I feel like it's really fresh, looks super good, um, and I think that like a lot of the ways you interact with things in the environment is pretty oh, different. Fantasy. You know, I had heard that this studio made Fantasy. Tower of Fantasy, and my expectations were- I heard they made Tower of Fantasy. Wait, what? Pretty different. You know, I had heard that this studio made I had heard. Fantasy, and my expectations were super low. As someone that was just watching gacha games come out, uh, super and low. just absolutely copied each other and every single mechanic and everything about each other, I, I wasn't super excited about it. I was, I thought the trailer was cool. I watched the trailer, that was my genuine reaction. I was like, oh. Okay, there's camera mode. Show self, show monsters, show allies, look at camera, the usual top sliders. And then you can zoom in on the booba. I wasn't super excited about it. Of course. I, was, I thought the trailer was cool. I watched the trailer. That was my genuine reaction. I was like, oh, that's pretty sick. You know, like I, that looks neat. But I wasn't expecting to like this game when I went into it. I genuinely thought mm -hmm. this game was just going to be like, all right. I got hands on with the game and I absolutely love it so far. Like when I tell you, I was genuinely shocked at how fun this game was to play. Even just for the short 45 minutes I got to play um, with some intro yapping storytelling and stuff. It was mm -hmm. absolutely so sick i think the biggest problem that i have with a lot of gacha games nowadays is that they just they do okay. the yoink and twist thing where basically you just look at whatever's doing well and you try to take that and make it your own <laughs> yoink and twist i wonder who what he's referencing what game he's referencing right here uh where basically you just look at whatever's doing well uh -huh. and try to take that and make it your own thing except definitely not weathering waves okay definitely not weathering waves the problem is that the other gacha games aren't making it their own thing. They're just yoinking. There's no there's no twist anywhere. It's just yoink. And I feel like this game actually did the twisting. And because they did the twisting, the game is actually okay. it has its own unique identity. And it looks really, really good. It plays super well. And man, I am just so stoked for Neverness to Everness. I did not... Hata actually twisting, okay? Unlike some other games on the market. Good. I expected to like uh i did not expect to like it this much and i really really hope this game releases soon in, in a complete state i don't i don't want them to rush it to completion or anything because this game is awesome it has new stats for us to think about uh -huh. uh, different awesome. ways to think in combat the character designs i just really love them i think they're super cute i'm glad they're embracing real cat girls and not giving us fake cat girls i think that's a really oh cute. no there's chests embracing real there's chests on top of the buildings guys Okay. Cat girls and not giving us fake cat girls. I think that's a really good step up. Anyways, guys, um, if you watch this on 1.5 speed, my condolences. You probably didn't understand a single thing I was saying. And if you're not a native English speaker, I feel even worse for you. But those are my honest first impressions of the game. After playing at Tokyo Game Show, I really really like this game i was absolutely blown away pretty good uh, and i hope that you guys will be too i hope that we can get a chance to show this on stream bridge district unheard shores damn at some point and show you guys live everything about uh -huh. it um perhaps with some better quality and everything this game is awesome i really have such high hopes for it
thanks for watching, guys, uh, and I'll catch you next time. Leave questions in the comments, smile. Oh, by the way, I recorded this whole thing in a room in Japan because everyone else was, like, gonna go to karaoke, and I was like, damn, I really just want to make a video about this game because I, I loved it so much. But if you're wondering why the audio sucks, that's why. Translation. I want to get this video out before everyone else so I can farm more ad revenue, okay? That's definitely more important than, than my social life. Okay, thank you. Thank you for doing that. We get something to react now. Okay, uh, cool. Good video. Actually good. Did a lot of glazing, okay? Hit me up for, for your payment, Brax. Good shit. Definitely not sponsored, okay? Lots of new information. Oh, and then also, uh, just might as well, right? Cool. There was a profile card thing. I don't think he showed. This is a screenshot from Nanoplasm. So this is what it looks like. Apparently, there is player profile cards, which makes sense. You can display like six different characters. I mean, that's eight. I can't fucking count. You can put an intro, days of encounters. I don't even know what that means. How long you've been playing this game? Uh, your birthday, hunter level, appraisal level. There's two different levels. So it's like the same, like in Wuwa, you have your level and then you have like a, a world level, right? I think. I think that's what it is. And then you can put four stickers. And then there's assets. Let's see the assets tab. And assets, you can dis oh, you can display your property. You can display your car. And then you can show how many characters you have. Figurine, achievements, and arc. What is arc? Like you can showcase how many collectibles you have, I guess. I guess it's just your usual flexing page. I don't see any like actual customization options like in Toph. But you know, Toph has it, so I don't see why not. <laughs> There's no like actual customization like Toph yet. But like if it is there, it's, it might be like kind of weird and they might not consider doing the Toph version because you know, you gotcha gamers are fucking weird, okay? We all know that. They're gonna do like fucking cringe stuff on their profile banner and scare away all the casuals. So like it depends on what type of target demographic Hoppa is aiming at. It's definitely more towards like the casual normies for this game. So they might not have the tough feature of straight up freedom, customization freedom. But this looks good. Pretty good fucking video. I guess we wait for Gotcha Smack to uh, release his video now since he also went to TGS, right?